Okay, so your question is about reptilians. How did they get here? What do they do? Can they shape shift? What's their food source? All right, so when you think about reptilians, you have to remember that there are different types of reptilians. From your question, it sounds like you're talking about humanoid reptilians or humanoid reptiles. Now, with reptiles, you have different types of reptiles, yeah? Like um, snakes, crocodiles, um, frogs, etc. right? So even us, we're tied into that because you're dealing with a being that comes from water or lives, lives in or under water. And when you're reading the Bible, for example, when you're reading um, even in Genesis, right? Genesis starts off with a flood because it says that, you know, somebody's re relaying the story of in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, but this person that's talking it's telling you about a time when there was no land, it was just water, because it was void, darkness upon the face of the deep. When you say the deep, yeah, the deep, you're dealing with water. So that should tell you that there was a being that was a reptilian, right, that was underwater. Now, how would you know that it's a reptilian? Because the fact that there was a flood and only beings in water will survive in a flood. And so when you carry on reading the Bible, in Genesis 3, this same being that now becomes referred to as a serpent. Now, a serpent is a snake. But in the case of this serpent in that Genesis story, he's able to walk and he's able to talk because they tell you that he was speaking with, with Eve. So when we go back into the creation story of any um, race culture that you go to, you will find that water, water comes in, whether you look at it from the scientific H2O, yeah, water is involved somewhere because wherever there is water, there is life. And so when we're talking about these reptilians, we are also tied into that because a reptile is a being that requires water. And some of them, because they're cold blooded, they can utilize the environment for it to, to deal with its temperature. Now, the reason water is important is because when you're dealing with how we come about, we are originally, we come from semen. You can hear phonetically, sea men. So when I say every culture deals with water, if you go to, you know, you hear about the Dagon or you know, dog, you can even hear phonetically, Dogon, right? Every culture talks about this being that comes out of the water. When you go to the, the oldest story, which is the ancient Egyptian story, they talk about, you know, they talk about a tomb, yeah? And then the, this is dealing with the sun, right? A tun and then a moon. But all of these come out of the water, right? The water being the, the deep, which is referred to as Anun. Um, so they say that Atum, yeah, took himself in hand, and that's how the, what they call the, um, the geese laid the golden egg. The geese, or the goose, that laid, laid the golden egg. Why is this important? Because when you're dealing with an egg, keep in mind, sea, men, and egg, this is how the man who puts his semen into the woman, right? 
I'll spell it like this on purpose. The womb man. Okay, the womb man. The semen goes into the womb of the woman and she lays an egg to produce life. A bit like a chicken laying an egg to produce, you know, produce a chick. Now, in this case, you might not see the reptilian or the semen and the woman as, as a reptile because the baby's grown inside her stomach, right? In what? In water. She grows that tadpole because this semen or the semen, when they gush out of the, the, of the man's penis, right? The man, he ejaculates 777,777,777,777 million, 777, sperms that gush out as semen and they rush into the ovum of the woman, right? The word womb is what the word dolphin means because the dolphin was responsible for the transportation of the genes that went into the, the water to germinate, to bring about our humanoid type of reptilian or reptiles. Now, when you start to look at the seamen, the waters, this is where the Egyptian story, which is the oldest one, right, deals with coming out of the waters onto land and then they talk about frogs and snakes and this serpent that is being spoken about in the Genesis 3 story, he's a, a reptilian, but he's an actual being. So when you say, where did they come from? Can they shape shift? Can they um, walk amongst us? And what is their food source? What we're saying is that we are part of the evolution cycle coming out of water this is why we still need water till today. The planet is more water than it is Earth. We are more water. We need water. We need to drink water every day. We need to bathe in water, take showers, or we will dehydrate. And so the reptilian nature is part of us. So we are part of reptilian. But you do have reptiles, which I was saying when you go back to the, the story in the Bible of Genesis, the beginning, it's talking about reptilians that were already here in the waters before the earth was formed into what it is today. Now those reptilians were living here and when the water or the flood subsided, they came back out onto land. And so how do you know this? Because the story of Cain and Abel in the Bible, when Cain kills Abel and he's afraid that when he goes to the land of Nod, these beings were going to kill him. These are those reptilian beings that were already here that were evolving and came onto land. So when I was saying Dagon or dealing with most cultures that deal with beings coming out of the water, you have, I'm trying to draw it, the, the, the hat that the Pope wears, that's also in the shape of a fish, yeah? And, and that deals with, it's called a mitre, M-I-T-R-E. So you can check that out, right? Because everyone talks about how life started in the waters and coming onto land. So you have us as reptilian beings as well. And what do we eat? Some people eat flesh and they eat um, meat and red meat. And that gives you the aggression of, a, of a, a reptilian. And we have, right? Remember the semen, they look like a sperm looks like this, yeah? Like a, like, like a little tadpole that gushes out. And when you look at a human, the way you're formed, really, your spinal column, this is, this is your head because that same tadpole grows up. And then when you're standing up straight, you know, this is a very basic drawing, but that's, let's say that's you now. This tail leads to your head, which we call the, there's, there's something in your brain called the reptilian brain reptilian brain right research all this and this is that tadpole that you've grown up into so you, that that is different from those original reptilian beings that were already on the planet 
before we evolved and came out of the water. And yes, they can shapeshift. The, the ones that are experienced or have evolved enough to the point where they can change their molecular structure. So yes, the answer is they can shapeshift. They are able to walk amongst us. Um, the, even the, the political parties that you see today, they, most of them have two colours, red and blue. So even if you look at like the Republican um, and the Democrat, then in the UK you have the same thing where you have the Conservative and you have the um, Labour, it's red and blue because it deals with the, the blue blood and the red blood. That's a whole, a whole different story. But yes, to answer your question is these reptiles are able to shapeshift. They came about by way of the serpent seed because in the Bible, the word that is used for the seed that we're talking about, which is this semen, is zira. Yeah? Either Z-E-R-A or Z-E-E-R-A, um, which is the, it says that, the serpent seed will have enmity with the woman seed. And the woman seed would be these, these beings that evolved from the water, which we know as the Patarites. Remember, Eve was from um, Naph and Patar. So Patar would be those Patarites, those short people that came onto land. But the thing is that you have both natures within you. You have the reptilian nature because you are a tadpole or a semen that grew in your mother's stomach for, you know, people say nine months, but we know it's 12 months. And then you have the Natharu's DNA by way of the Patarites. That's why you can't be good or bad. You have both natures. The disagreeable being that reptilian nature that likes to be fed, you know, blood meat, etc., to give you that aggression. And so, the people that are running the world who are of that seed, because the serpent has seed and the, the woman has seed on the planet. And these are offspring that are by way of real beings having children. It tells you that in Genesis that some of these Nephilim, these beings, they had children and the children are on the planet today. So you have both natures and you have to align your nature to one side or the other meaning that if you want to suppress the disagreeable side of you, then you will have to feed your Natharu side or the God side of you, right? So you have God, good and evil or God and bad, uh, God and the devil or evil, which is why it's hard for you to say you're going to be good all the time because good is subjective, you know, but it's really being agreeable or disagreeable. And um, people call that being bad, but it's really about knowing what's right to do and what's wrong to do and being in the middle, which deals with balance. And that's what Wu Sabat is here to teach you, how to suppress your disagreeable nature and how to become more agreeable so that, you know, you can actually put into action the things that are supposed to help you elevate as being a supreme being. All right, so yes, when we're dealing with reptilians, they were already here living in the waters. Now, people might ask, how did they get to be here? The water thing is very, very important because you're dealing with, when we say hydrogen, because hydro actually refers to water. Hydrogen really is hydro, the genes, yeah, water genes, because wherever there's water, there's life. Different types of life forms starting off, as I said, as, as semen or as seeds or, um, you know, very minute bacteria that then grows. So yes, you have the ability to be a supreme being um, and, and, and walk amongst us. This is why it's about people's actions, not really like what, what you might term good might be bad to somebody else and what you might turn bad, could be good to somebody else. But it's all about knowing that we tie into the reptilian nature, but there are beings that were here from the beginning. And wh why I mentioned hydrogen is because when you look at the planet Earth itself, it also came from water. 
This is why there's hydrogen abundantly in the, you know, in the universe. There were life forms on other planets before this one, and even this planet has had many iterations, and so different life forms then came from different places and took that which was evolving naturally on the planet, mixed in with them to produce hybrids. And um, so now you've got different types of reptilians, reptilians walking the planet. Some can shapeshift and some eat meat and some still have children today to produce uh, a, a food source. This is why when we speak in our doctrine about the food for the gods, it's that some of these reptilian, they were flesh and meat eaters and human, human eaters. And um, so we, we actually, by way of the Pan Athara, we took ourselves from the, the food chain. Yeah, so if, if we were still like amongst lions and tigers and, you know, animals that can eat us, they would eat us. But we have managed to take ourselves from that chain by way of having intelligence, which came with the mixing in of the, the, um, the Natharu's DNA and genes to the point where we took ourselves away. But we still, some people still eat other flesh like chickens and cows and, you know, um, lambs and so on and so on. So that reptilian nature is what's making people want to feed that side and uh, um, the disagreeable side of you. So it's really about learning to suppress that being. But yes, to answer your question, the answer to everything you've said is really yes. They were here before we came, some of us, and they mixed in with us. They shapeshift, they walk amongst us, and their food source can be humans. This is why when the dr draconians, which are another... Um, form of reptilians, they were eating the Pleiadians and these Pleiadian beings pleaded with them to say, stop eating us, we will give you a substitute or a different food source. So they were like, okay, let's make a deal. So they said, we're going to create a being in our image and our likeness. And that's where in the Bible people are thinking, is this one God that is talking, but it's these Pleiadians that are saying to these you know, draconians, we're going to create a food source for you. And they created something called the Adamite. So when people are reading the Bible, they're thinking Adam was the first man. That's that one Adam that was being created by these Pleiadians to look in their image and after their likeness. And so that's where the confusion comes in because the Adamites were created as a food source for the reptilians. So they, they like to eat um, flesh, but obviously in today's day and time, people are still eating other um, animals in the food chain, but now we have been broken away from that. So it isn't one direct kind of like, we all come from one place because that's where the confusion comes in. When people say, if we all come from one place, how did the devil or the evil come to be? That's because the mixture with those reptilian beings is what produced that. And then you have different strains of of humans where today it's not just as simple as we all come from one because you have different, um, you know, you have like the Africans and you have the Asians and you have the Caucasians, which is showing you that there was a missing link because when they talk about links, they're basically saying on the chain of existence, there's a link. Yeah, people can see that there's a, a link and then it gets to a point where it breaks and they don't understand how, how did it break? Yeah, it broke because when you're looking at it, you're seeing that when you're tracing, say, the Caucasian, yeah, they have different skin color, different hair texture, different blood types, then it's the same with the Asians. But they all have a link to the, to the Africans, okay, who were the original. So now they're like trying to figure out why that chain broke. You see, so we don't all come from the same place other than the fact that the, the genes that were used to create the other races come from, come from the original Africans, yeah, by way of the Parnatharu. So 
I hope that's answered that question. Um, yeah, if not, please, you know, ask further questions and we can e expound. But every creation story talks about beings coming out of the water. Water is always involved and where there's water, you're talking about reptiles or reptilian beings because that's where they come from. All right.